to our faith. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We are grateful to you for the opportunity to gather. We thank you that the church of Christ is marching on. And the gate of hell has not been able to shut it down. Thank you for the, that the worship of the Almighty God is still being done. Lord, we appreciate you for giving us this privilege. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of consciousness. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for the gift of sunshine. Thank you for the gift of the night. Thank you for the gift of family. Thank you for the gift of loved ones. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Thank you for the gift of a savior. Thank you for the gift of a deliverer. Thank you for the gift of your word. Thank you for your mercy. Please receive our thanks in Jesus name. Tonight again Lord. Set forth your word. I yield myself to you Lord. Let it just be your word. Coming out to your people. Setting people free. Setting captives free. Giving people wings to fly. And taking us to heights behind beyond our imagination. Thank you Heavenly Father. Let your name be glorified. Thank you Lord. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Let me hear a powerful amen. Tonight again. The Lord will bless you. Now tell yourself. I am in for my miracle. Alright. Tell yourself again. It's my time to fly. Tell yourself again, I am destined to fly. And I will fly. Can I hear three powerful amen? As you have spoken, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. You will indeed begin to fly tonight. From this night, you will begin to fly. No matter what power it is that has kept you on ground, that power shall be broken again. And you will fly again. The Lord told me to tell somebody this statement and I will just make it. And that will be the title of my message tonight. So when I say it, you will know. The eagle will fly again. The eagle will fly again. That word is for somebody. And I repeat again. The eagle will fly again. No matter what has happened. No matter what you pass through. No matter what befell you. No matter your condition. I say by the word of the Lord. And by the spirit of the Lord. Who spoke to me and said, Tell him, tell her, The eagle will fly again. What is it to fly? It is to get on top of the matter. Let me tell you, by the word of the Lord, That sickness that came to cripple you, That stopped you and grounded you from flying, The Lord said as you tell you, I said, The eagle will fly again. The chain of sickness and disease. Christ, the The chain of incapacitation. That affliction that Satan has put on you as a limiting force. It is broken tonight. I say, the eagle will fly again. What is it to fly? It's to be on top of the matter. 
It's to have dominion. It's to win the battle. It is winning the race. It is excelling in life. It is making it to the top. It is breaking through to success. We are everybody said there can be no success. It is beating failure and overpowering overcoming failure. It is overcoming obstacles. It is victory over the enemies. It is getting back to power. It is breaking the limitation. It is soaring high above the limits. The eagle will fly again. Israel was in distress. Insecurity plagued Israel. Surrounding nations kept on harassing them. And they suddenly felt it was the lack of a king that made them vulnerable. They demanded from Samuel and said, give us a king that will raise an army. And then the army will become our security. And these nations will not be harassing us. Someone felt bad bad about it. But God said, give them a king. And God said to Samuel, I will bring the king to you by this time tomorrow. The one that shall lead my people. The one that shall deliver them from their enemies. Especially the Philistines. The one that shall reign over them. The one that shall be the commander over my inheritance. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, from verse 15 to 20, God had prepared a man. He saw the son of Kish. But the man was not in any way naturally qualified to be a general, to be a conqueror. But God said to Samuel, I will bring him to you by this time tomorrow. And when he comes to you, then you will declare my word unto him. And then you will anoint him with oil. And once you do that, the man will become capable, capable to lead my people. By the word that is coming tonight, somebody will begin to fly. Tomorrow about this time, First Samuel chapter 9, verse 16. Tomorrow about this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. And you will anoint him to be commander over my people Israel. That he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines. And you shall anoint him. Commander over my people. So two things you will do. You declare my word to him. Number two, you anoint him. From this altar, the word is coming for tonight. If you receive the word, then that is the genesis of your flying. And from this altar, there is an oil flowing. If that oil comes to you, then you get ready to fly. So, the man to be anointed had no information. He had no news. He was looking for lost asses. And by the coincidence of suggestion, his servant said, let's go to the seer. That is the prophet. He might be able to show us what has happened to the asses. They got to the prophet. And here, Saul is asking the prophet, we are looking for the seer. He said, yes, speaking to you. Are you not from Benjamin? Come, don't be worried about the lost asses. They have been found. But I have a greater news for you. You will come and sit with me and then I will let you go. The man became king. What affected Saul? That Saul suddenly changed. Two things. Someone told him the word of the Lord, which he accepted. Two, Samuel poured oil on his head, which he submitted to. But Samuel told him, after this oil has touched your head, you will meet a gang of prophets. And the Spirit of God, represented by the oil, shall 
come upon you and you will begin to prophesy. And after that, you will be another man. I want to announce to somebody here tonight, whatever has been your condition before you came here, every negative condition will give way tonight. Saul was a timid man. He was a man plagued with timidity and inferiority complex. He has a historical sense of being inferior. He was naturally timid. His father's house is the least in Benjamin, meaning the poorest, in, in the least honored in Benjamin. Benjamin is the child that the mother had and she died. And she called the child Benoni. But Jacob was smart to change it to Benjamin. Otherwise, that child would have been plagued with sorrow all his life. Now, that Benjamin is the last born, the last son. So he is the least in Israel. And Saul said, what you are saying cannot be for me. But something happened. When Samuel called him in the morning and told him the word of the Lord, you have a calling. You will go in and out before the people of God. You will be the commander of the army. You will deliver them from the Philistines and other enemies. And you will reign over the people. He said, what? He said, don't worry. Believe what I tell you. And by the time I pour this oil on your head, you will be another man. He knelt down. The oil was poured on him. The word was pronounced. By the word that is coming from this altar tonight, the God who told me, the eagle will fly again. I prophesy into your life, you will fly again. A combination of the word and the spirit powered him to fly and made him another man. Get ready for your change tonight. And get ready to become a high flyer. You came here guilty and condemned, but you will return home justified and acquitted. Saul went to Samuel, timid and inferior. But when he went back home, he was a general. He was a lion. He was not the timid Saul that left home. To the point that his uncle said, come, Saul, you are looking different. Where did you go to? What happened to you? Because the Saul they saw on his return was not the Saul that left home. I speak into your life. Wherever you are listening to me, by the end of this meeting, you will be another man. You came here a sinner, but you return home a saint. You came here poor and a debtor, but I prophesy to your life, you will return home rich. You will return home to become a lender. You came here a victim and a captive, but I speak to your life, you will return home a victor and a captain. You came here a loser, but you will return home a winner. You came here in despair and sorrow, but you will return home with joy and excitement. You came here sick and afflicted, but you will return home healed. If you believe it, stand up and shout three powerful amen. The eagle will fly again. Under Saul, the anointed Saul, Nahash and the Ammonites were swiftly crushed. In 1 Samuel chapter 11, verse 11 to 13. Under Saul, Agag and the Amalekites were wasted and destroyed. In 1 Samuel 15, 7 to 9. Under Saul, according to 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 47 to 49, all other enemy nations were subdued and harassed. The scripture says, verse 47, 1 Samuel 14, 47. 
So Saul established his sovereignty over Israel and fought against all his enemies on every side. Against Moab, against Ammon, against Edom, against kings of Zobah, against Philistines. Wherever he turned, he harassed them. And he gathered an army and attacked the Amalekites and delivered Israel from the hands of those who plundered them in the past. Saul was a high flyer. But now, something happened. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, something happened. Something had changed. The high flying Saul was grounded. So grounded, timidity returned. Fear returned. Failure returned. Defeat returned. Inferiority complex returned. What happened? First Samuel chapter 17, verse 1 to 3. The Philistines gathered the armies together to battle. Against Judah. Against Israel. Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side. And Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. Verse 5, verse 8, 4 Samuel 17, 8. Then a champion from the Philistines stood up and cried to the armies of Israel. Why have you come out to fight the battle? I'm a Philistine. Choose a champion from among yourselves. If he's able to fight me and kill me, we will be your servants. But if I kill him, you will be our servants. I defy the armies of Israel. This day, give me a man. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. What happened to the lion in Saul? What happened to the conqueror in Saul? Where is the commander anointed to win wars? The eagle had been grounded. Defeat and slavery stared Israel in the eyes. As Goliath threatened to ground Israel and bring them under. Desperately and urgently. A deliverer must arise for Israel or else defeat, shame, servitude, captivity, death, sorrow will come again to Israel. What happened that the champion of yesterday cannot come out? Saul made promises. I will give my daughter to whoever can go. I will make him rich. I will free his family from taxation. No general. Desperately and urgently needed. A high flyer was needed in Israel. To deliver Israel from this embarrassment that was staring them in the eyes. I don't know what your family has been going through. But I have good news for somebody here today. The eagle will fly again. You used to feed well in the family until a downturn came. Your marriage used to be rosy and good until a downturn came. Your business was flying high until a downturn came. Everything was going well until that sickness showed up and paralyzed the breadwinner of the family. But tonight, by the mercies of God, the eagle will fly again. What happened to Saul, the conqueror? I cannot read the details tonight. But Saul trespassed the altar. Saul loved money above the word of God. Saul chose to take money and disobey God. Saul justified his sin and his failure. He got to a point that he was even 
justifying and excusing what he did to Samuel. Until Samuel in anger will go away. He held Samuel's dress. In 1 Samuel chapter 15. And while Samuel was going away, the dress was torn. It was a negative prophetic action. Samuel turned around to go away. Saul seen this edge of his robe and he tore. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from your hand. Tonight, whatever you did that brought a downturn, God will show you mercy. Saul could not find mercy because he never accepted his sin. And God said to Samuel, I have chosen another king. May God not replace you. May God help you to fulfill your destiny. And God said to Samuel, go to the house of Jesse. Go to Judah. Go to Bethlehem. Go there. There is somebody there that I will show you. You do the same thing. You give him my word. And you pour the oil on his head. And then he will become another man. And Samuel obeyed the Lord. Because the Lord said, I've given up on Saul. May God not give up on you. I know God sent me to somebody here tonight. Why did God give up on Saul? Saul couldn't just say, I am sorry. He couldn't just say, I have sinned. He couldn't humble himself. David was anointed. And as soon as David was anointed, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And David became another man. It was one day he woke up as a shepherd. But after the oil touched his head, he went to bed. The commander, the general, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He became another man. Today as you accept the word of God and allow the spirit of God to overcome you, to overwhelm you, to come on you, you will become another man. It was this man that was anointed in secret that came to the rescue of Israel. And in chapter 17, he found his way to the battleground. It was the 40th day that Goliath had been threatening Israel with servitude, with death, with defeat. When David had, ah, he said, what am I hearing? What am I hearing? What am I hearing? And he offered to go and kill Goliath. Everybody told him he cannot succeed. He said, keep that to yourself. I will kill him. What informed his boldness? Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7. I will cause all that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They will come in one way and they shall run in seven different ways. Let me tell you, the demons that tie down your fathers will not be able to tie you down. The wicked men that have determined that you will not go for that will not be able to stop you. Tonight they shall be smitten before your face. Can I hear another amen? The dominion anointing was of David. And he went out. Hear what he said. Saul told him, David, you are a junior, you are a minor. You are still a teenager. You can't face this guy. David said, sir, I will kill this man. A bear and a lion came to my flock, seized my lamb. God delivered me from them and I killed them and I rescued my lamb. The same God will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine and deliver him into my hand. I want to prophesy into your life that the thing that has been troubling you will collapse before you today. David 
David had zero fear, zero worry, zero anxiety, and he had total faith in God. Do you know that because you are here tonight, God will cause you to fly? Because you are hearing me tonight, God will cause you to fly. You know the story. David killed Goliath. David conquered all the surrounding nations. David became king after Saul's death. David became the greatest name in his generation. But something happened. The eagle was shot. And the eagle fell. The devil went after David. The same devil that went after Eli. And caused his governance to fail. The same devil that caused Eli's sons to be rejected. The same devil that went after Saul and caused him to crash. He's now coming after David. What did he do to David? He said, let's look for what David loves. And what we can use on him. They offered him the lust of the eyes. Mistakenly, his eyes stumbled on a very beautiful woman. And instead of taking his eyes off, in 1 Samuel chapter 11, he, he refused to take his eyes off. 2 Samuel chapter 11. He refused to take his eyes off. He kept on looking. He kept on looking. He kept on looking until he got into trouble. Then he fell for the woman, sent for the woman, consumed his lust, satisfied his lust, and an unwanted baby came. And David decided, now I've had enough of this. This cannot continue. I need to cover my track. Let me tell you today, the most foolish thing that can happen to a Christian is to sin and to cover his sin. Cause is anyone that covers his sin. The devil told David, David, you are a king. You must cover this. He arranged the cover. It failed. Then he finally said, said, get rid of the man. And David, in covering his sin, arranged the death of the husband of the woman that he slept with. And the spirit was telling David, Thou shalt not commit adultery. He said, Holy Spirit, wait. David, thou shalt not kill. Holy Spirit, leave that one alone. We'll settle it down. There's forgiveness. I'll, I'll, I'll make sacrifice. There's forgiveness. I'll make sacrifice. There's forgiveness. David, thou shalt not kill. He despised the voice of the Lord. He rejected the word of the Lord. David, David, he will not hear. Then, he killed the man. Took the woman in and married her. And God said, Will David be grounded and he will die like the other kings? Have I not said, I will not withdraw my mercy from David? I know what to do. I will get him to repent. I will bring it to the open. And God arranged with a prophet. And prophet Nathan went to David and gave him a parable. He gave him a very good parable. In chapter 12. He told him a certain man. Very rich. Had a thousand cattle. Two thousand sheep. So many goats. Had a visitor. But his neighbor was a very poor man that had only one lamb. So one day the, vis- the, poor, the rich man had a visitor. And he looked around and said, Ah, this man, poor man's lamb is good. I will use it to entertain my visitor. And he slew the poor man's lamb. Ha, ha. And then, he entertained his visitor. And the poor man has no power to resist him. David was angry. David said, What? In this kingdom, in this kingdom, that man shall die. Number two, he will restore to the man four 
lambs. The prophet said, you are the man. You are the man. David put his hand on his head. The prophet said to him, you are the man. You are the one. You are the one. Do you know that every time we cover our sin, we secure, we, we, we disconnect ourselves from mercy. Every time we cover our sins, because of the shame, because of the troubles, we incur causes and go further away from mercy. Every advice that encourages you to keep covering is an advice to keep you far from mercy. Satan's way of shutting you out of God's mercy is to keep you covering your sin. The more you cover your sin and pretend, the farther you are from the door of mercy. The more difficult it is for you to assess mercy. The more you cover your sins, the more, the, the greater the cost you are incurring. The further the covering, the greater the cost. And the more difficult it is for you to assess mercy. But tonight, as Nathan helped David to come to the gate of mercy, by making David to preside over his own case, unknowingly, God has sent me to you because the eagle will fly again. You have been saying, I've been asking God for mercy. Five years, seven years. It is because you have been covering. Only mercy can break the shackle of sin and judgment and curses. James chapter 2 verse 13. Only mercy triumphs over judgment. Eh, we know that the law of God says I shouldn't do it. But you know there is forgiveness. Ah. There was forgiveness in the days of David. After Nathan spoke to him, he put his hand on his head. He fell down and said, Ha! Ha! I have seen what I thought was covered was not covered. Oh God, have mercy on me. I have seen. So I'm going to die. Because it was David who said, The man shall die. That is the judgment. So when he was rolling, Nathan looked at him. He said, King David, you will not die. Your sin is forgiven. However, the child born of adultery shall die. And the other side judgments will take effect. David lost four sons. The sword came into David's house. David's son defiled David's daughter. David's son slept with David's wives in the open. David's son killed David's son, another son. David's son pursued him out of the town. David's son took over the throne. David's son raised an army to go after him. But because the prophet had pronounced forgiveness for him, that son died. David returned to the throne. But that was not enough. Another son enthroned himself. David acted and that son died. Listen to me. Reduce your suffering. Put an end to your being grounded. You are set to fly again. Whatever you did that grounded you, that grounded your business, that grounded your marriage, that grounded your ministry, that grounded your calling, that, grounded, that stopped you from flying, the blood of Jesus will undo it tonight. Even if you have killed somebody like David. Jesus gave us, his apostles, the authority to forgive sins. And he says, anyone's sin we forgive or not, 
shall be forgiven in heaven. The eagle will fly again. And when God forgave David, even though Satan and hell struggled, David began to fly again. He did not end up like Saul. Saul was anointed to destroy Philistines. But when the word, he rejected the word of God, and the spirit left him, the Philistines, he died in the battle against Philistines. Listen to me. Don't reject the word that has come to you tonight. The word is this. The eagle will fly again. But for the eagle to fly again, the eagle must repent. The eagle must accept that wrong is wrong. Stop following the doctrines of those who say, it doesn't matter, you can sin. God forgave David. But look at the crisis. Don't follow the doctrine. From the time some of you stop paying tight. Have you seen the nose diving of your business? Some charlatans just went saying, don't pay tight, don't pay tight. And you stopped. And you are asking, I don't know what went wrong with my business. Repent. God has sent me to you today. You are wondering what happened to your marriage. When you went after another person's wife. Your marriage collapsed. You went after another person's husband. Your marriage collapsed. You know what you did. But the way is open tonight. You know. You want to be forgiven. You know. You are tired of being grounded. You know. You want to fly again. You know. And God knows. And I bring you the word. The eagle will fly again. But you must do what David did. Let us pray. If you want to be forgiven tonight. If you are tired of being grounded. And you really want to fly again. And you know that God sent me to you. And you know you can realize you understand what happened. Then come out tonight to be forgiven. And I will pray for you. And wherever you are hearing me all over the world. If you are in your house. In the comfort of your room. Or in the viewing center. Move to the front. In your house. Change your position. Go on your knees. But if you are in this hall. Or in the overflow hall. Wherever you are. And you want to be forgiven. Start coming now. I will pray for you. And you will be forgiven. Start coming Start coming and come quickly. I'm going to count one to ten. Because we need to pray and get through this. One. If you are coming, come quickly. It is you that wants to fly. The choice to fly is your own. So if you want to be forgiven tonight, then start coming. Two. Please, if you are coming, come quickly. God sent me to you. Whoever you are, no matter your status... No matter how great, David was the greatest man in Israel. He was the king and the chief judge of Israel. But David humbled himself. Three, if you are coming, come quickly. Please come quickly. Come and surrender your life. Come and give up that sin. Let forgiveness, let the mercy of God flow to you tonight. There is no better time to break the shackles holding you down. Four, Please, if you are able to run, run and come down. If you are not able, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is your night. The eagle will fly again. Keep coming. Keep coming. I'm waiting for you. I repeat, four. Please, just keep coming. I know you are coming from a distance and I see you coming. But keep coming. Just keep coming. Double up if you can double up. Just keep coming. Five. 
There is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. Please keep coming. The Lord is waiting for you, waiting to forgive you. Five! There is a firm ten feet with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And seen as plant beneath the flood lose all the gift Six. Please keep coming, keep coming. Seven. Please try and move faster. Thank you, thank you. I see you coming. I see you coming. I know you are coming from very far. While they are coming out, I want the rest of us to stand up where we are. While they are coming, seven, please keep coming. I'm waiting for you. I want the rest of us to stand up and say, Father, whatever has been holding me down from flying, let your mercy break it tonight. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Eight. Hey, those of you coming, I'm waiting for you. Come quickly, come quickly. Father, whatever I need to repent of tonight, help me to repent of it. Let your mercy break that yoke. Hey, I'm waiting for you. Keep coming. Please, I encourage you. I see those of you still coming. Just keep coming. The Lord is with you. Just keep coming. Thank you. Thank you. You will arrive there. Don't go back. Just keep on coming. Those of you who are praying, pray fervently. Pray fervently. Pray with every fervency. Don't cover any sin. Those of you who are here begin to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, forgive me. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you out here, say with me, Father. And those of you on the way, keep coming and say the prayer as you are coming. Father, have mercy on me. I make no excuse for my sin. I am sorry. I admit that I am guilty. I have done wrong. I have sinned against you. As you showed mercy to David, show me mercy tonight. Oh God, according to your promise, if I confess my sin and I forsake them, I will receive mercy. Tonight, I have confessed to you and I forsake those sins. Let your mercy come upon my life in the name of Jesus. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that Jesus shed his precious blood to take away my sin. Now that I have confessed my sins, I receive forgiveness. I receive mercy. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me tonight. Thank you for your mercy. Write my name in the book of life. 
and for the rest of my life I will follow you thank you father help me to fly again in every area of my life I receive the power to fly in Jesus name Amen Everybody place your hand on your head as I pray Whether you are in the congregation or you are in front In the mighty name of Jesus I invoke the mercy of God upon your life By the precious blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross Through the suffering of Jesus on the cross and his blood that was shed I command let mercy prevail in your life Let judgment be overthrown tonight. Let mercy triumph over judgment for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every chain and shackle the enemy has used to hold you down. Sickness, disease, failure, cause sorrow. I command it to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. All the enemies that have barred your way. Saying you cannot fly again. We command them to be smitten before you in the name of Jesus. As all the enemies of David fell before David, let all your enemies begin to fall before you. Let the demons begin to collapse before you. I decree now, according to the word that God gave me, you will fly again. You will begin to fly again. In the name of Jesus, you will fly higher than before. Your life will never remain the same. You have come to this place. You are going back a new man. You are going back another man. Begin to fly from now. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Let me hear three powerful amen. Please those of you who are here. Can you look at somebody holding up a plate there? Please follow them. Please just go with them. They are going to take your names and your contacts so that daddy can begin to pray for you from now. Somebody shout, I am flying again.